Hey what's up guys welcome back to our channel and I hope you're all doing well. In this video I'm going to recap the performance of my portfolio from July and so far into August and I'll also talk about the potential trades I'll be making into the second half of 2021. Let's jump right in. If you're new to the channel or you've seen my content before do me one huge favor hit that like and subscribe button. Why? Because it does two things. One it lets me know to produce more content like this and two you don't miss out on future performance updates. The first stock I'm going to talk about is AP, Allied Properties. I've added three more shares of this holding between July and early August. I currently have 15 shares of Allied Properties with a book value just under $650 and a market value just under $660. I have an open gain of just under $10. I've received lifetime dividends of $4.67, giving me a total gain of just under $15. And currently it makes up 2% of my portfolio and my yield on cost is just shy of 4%. In late July, Allied reported its Q2 2021 results in which FFO and AFFO per unit rose to record levels coming in at 60.2 cents and 53.3 cents. As Allied Properties portfolio has grown, so too have their distributions. In fact, they have raised their annual distribution almost every year since 2004. This is the exact kind of dividend grower you want with a great exposure to Canada's real estate market. I'll definitely be picking up more shares of this stock in the second half of 2021. The next stock I'm going to talk about is Acon Group, ticker symbol ARE. Although I haven't added any new shares in July, they have seen a nice little uptick. I currently have 36 shares with a book value of $677 and a market value of $743. I have a gain of $66, which is just under 10%. Factor in my lifetime dividends of $6.48 and my total gain is over $72, which is a performance return of just under 11%. Acon currently makes up 2% of my overall portfolio and my yield on cost is 3.65%. TD Securities is maintaining a buy rating for this dividend stock. A national bank has given this stock an outperform rating. During the Q2 2021 results, revenue for the three months ended June was 25% higher compared to the same quarter in 2020. At the same time, they were also awarded over $1.6 billion of new projects due to the sheer demand for Acon services. This is a fantastic stock if you're looking for exposure into Canada's construction sector. Let's talk about Kushtard, ticker symbol ATD. This is another stock I talk about often. In fact, this stock was featured during my five stocks picks for July. I currently have 19 shares of ATD with a book value of $788 and a market value of over $970. I have an open gain of $182, which is a 23% return. Factor in my lifetime dividends of $1.76. My total gain is $183, meaning my total return so far is 23%. That's an amazing performance. Honestly, ATD has seen such amazing performance in 2021. And I'm expecting this performance to continue as the company grows through organic operations and acquisitions. This currently makes up 2% of my overall portfolio. I have a yield on cost at just under 1%. This is a stock that I'm holding not for the dividend yield, but for the dividend growth. And this stock has shown some amazing dividend growth over the years. This is a phenomenal business. It's seen amazing growth and that growth is expected to continue. In fact, Ushtard is on the path of doubling its pre-tax profit by 2023. To help accomplish this goal, they have entered an agreement to acquire Wilson's Gas Stops and Go Stores in Atlantic Canada. This company is on growth road and I'll be picking up more shares along the ride. Brookfield Asset Management, ticker symbol BAM or BAM. You honestly gotta love Brookfield Asset Management. Owning this stock gives you exposure to multiple businesses and growth segments. It's like a mini ETF on its own. I currently have 22 shares with a book value of just under $1,300 and a market value of $1,561. I have an open gain of $288. That's a 22.65% return factor in my $3 of dividends and my total gain is $291 with a total return of just under 23%. BAM currently makes up 4% of my overall portfolio with a yield on cost at 1.12%. This is another stock that I'm not holding on for the yield but for its phenomenal track record of dividend growth. As you'll see throughout this video, I like to hold some stocks for a higher yield less growth and some stocks that have a lower yield but fantastic growth and i like having a mix of those stocks there is no question that the best way to grow your money is through long-term investing buying and holding strong companies is a proven track record of building wealth over the long term investing in this manner is not a get rich quick scheme rather it's a get rich slow and steady on a fundamental basis scheme 
BAM recently released their latest quarterly results and showed some phenomenal performance. $2.4 billion of net income, $1.2 billion of distributable earnings in just their second quarter. Strong performance continues from this dividend rock star, Brookfield Infrastructure Corporation, ticker symbol BIPC. This is another Brookfield company in my portfolio. They are one of the largest infrastructure investors in the world, owning and operating assets across utilities, transport, energy, and data sectors. I currently have seven shares of BIPC the book value of $614 and a market value of $564. For this Brookfield holding, I actually have a loss of just under $50, which equals a loss of 8.13%. Factor my dividends and that cuts down my loss to $45 or 7.43%. Whereas BAM made up 4% of my portfolio, BIPC only makes up 1% of my overall portfolio. But with BIPC, I have a yield of just under 3%. And that's what I mean. I have some stocks with a higher yield, but I'm expecting lower growth. And some stocks with a lower yield, but I'm expecting a higher dividend growth. Now I get asked about this quite often. If you are interested in using this spreadsheet to track your own portfolio the exact same way I do, there's a link in the description where you can download a copy for yourself right now. The next stock I'm going to talk about is BMO, Bank of Montreal. And I'll say this time and time again, this is a core holding. I will pick up more shares regardless of that market price as soon as my target allocation drops below 5%. I currently have 16 shares of BMO with a book value of $1,842 and a market value of $2,059. That gives me an open gain of $217 or an 11.8% return. Now if I factor in my lifetime dividends of $6, my total gain on this holding is $223 which is 12.1%, and this makes up 5% of my overall portfolio. So as I mentioned, if this number were to drop below this 5%, I will pick up more shares. And my current yield on cost for BMO is 3.71%. Every time there's a dip with BMO or any other big bank that I hold, I'm buying. It's an easy decision. BMO also announced in early August $12 billion of financing for affordable housing. There is no doubt that Canadians are facing a housing crisis. All Canadians should be able to have a home that's reasonably priced that they can afford and that meets their needs. It should not be an overburden our individual's finances. A home is a crucial element in one's life and it should be affordable. And if you want to hear more of my thoughts on Canada's housing crisis, make sure you check out this video. The next item I want to show you guys is my Bitcoin ETF and my Ethereum ETF. After seeing major losses in these holdings around 20% or so, these guys have bounced back since my last month's update. With the Bitcoin ETF, I have 26 shares and with the Ethereum ETF, I have 16 shares. Combined a book value of just over $400 and a market value of over $463. This is a stark contrast compared to my last month where I had losses of more than 20%. This just shows you how volatile ETF holding crypto are. Some months you can have major gains, some months you can have major losses. It just depends on your own risk profile, how much exposure you want into these ETFs. So with the Bitcoin ETF, I have a gain of 10.6% and with the Ethereum ETF, I have a gain of 19.21% and they both make up 1% of my overall portfolio each. There are a few different approaches you can take when it comes to investing in these crypto ETFs. One approach is buying low and selling high, rinse and repeat based on cycles of volatility. Now this is a riskier approach you have to time the market almost perfectly. You have to buy when there's an exceptionally low price and sell when it really shoots up. So if you're able to time the market, you can pick up some quick profits. The other approach is you can continuously keep buying on a set periodic basis and then sell when you have a massive gain all at once. So to summarize, buy low, sell high, periodically based on cycles, or you buy and hold for the long term. In terms of my approach, I'm going to be buying and holding for the long term. Every time there's a major dip, I'll pick up a few shares here and there, and then I just hold if the market price reaches at a certain point. Now, if I were to make some massive profits with these ETFs, I may just sell the two holdings all together and be done with it. So right now I'm just taking a wait and see approach. I'll just keep holding and see where it goes from there. The next company I'm going to talk about is ECN Capital ticker symbol ECN. And if you've been following my channel, I've talked about this company a whole lot. This is a very underrated, undervalued pick. Not a lot of people know about ECN Capital, but it has tremendous growth potential. ECN Capital's management team has built a robust specialty finance business platform that has prospered and delivered maximum returns to shareholders. I currently have 16 shares of ECN Capital with a book value just under $140 and a market value just shy of $170. This gives me a gain of over $30 and a 21.76% return. Factor my 36 cents of lifetime dividends and you pretty much have the same gain in terms of dollars and in terms of percentage. This makes up less than 1% of my holdings and the reason it's less than 1% of my holdings because this is a riskier play. So it's sort of my high flying, take a risk, see where it goes approach. And so far it 
has paid off. I'm up 22%. Now, I always think when I look at this, what if I had bought more shares? This would be a massive gain right here instead of just $30. And because it is a dividend payer, my yield on cost is just shy of 1.5%. On August 10th, ECN Capital announced the sale of their point of sale lending business to Trius Financial out of the US. After the deal closes, ECN is expected to pay a special dividend of $7.50 per common share. Again, they will be paying a special one-time dividend of $7.50 per share. And if you look at the share price, it's currently trading at $10. Dollars and sixty cents. That's close to a seventy-five percent instant return. If you were to hold on, buy right now, and wait for that special dividend. So if you are thinking about ECN Capital, this could be a very interesting and lucrative pickup for your portfolio going into Q4 of 2021. Let's take a look at Granite REIT ticker symbol GRT. Granite REIT is one of my favorite real estate holdings. They have an amazing portfolio of industrial properties worldwide, not just in Canada. I currently have ten shares of the REIT with a book value just under eight hundred dollars and a market value of eight hundred ninety-one dollars which gives me an open gain of just under $100 or a 12.56% return. Factor in my lifetime dividends of $5.51 and I have a total gain of over $105 which is equal to 13.26% return. Granted currently makes up 2% of my overall portfolio and has a yield on cost just shy of 4% at 3.83%. With Granite REIT, industrial properties are in no doubt high demand as we continue to push the boundaries of online shopping and e-commerce. Granite REIT has a ton of growth potential as they continue expand on their portfolio by acquiring new industrial properties. I'm very happy with this holding. In fact, RBC Capital raised the price target from $87 to $96 per share. The stock is up 15% on a year to date basis and it's currently trading just under $9 per share. So it still has a ton of growth potential in terms of that price target of $96. And if you want to learn even more about Granite REIT and its business prospects, make sure you check out this video where I go into Granite REIT's business and as an investment for you in much more detail. Now, if you're wondering what brokerage platform do I use to manage this portfolio, I use Wealth Simple Trade. And if you have not had a chance to use it, I highly recommend you do. Zero trading costs, zero commissions on all Canadian stocks. There are no account minimums, open and fund an account. And to top it all off, they have a great user interface, which is especially important if you're new to investing. And if you have not opened an account with Wealth Simple, they have an amazing promo right now where if you sign up using the link in the description, you can get two free stocks worth up to $4,500. Yes, you can get potential of two free stocks worth anywhere between $5 to $4,500. So I highly recommend you check out that promo. Don't miss out. Taking a look at another REIT, Interrent, ticker symbol IIP. This is another REIT that I love. It's an absolute grower, both in terms of dividends and capital appreciation. I currently have 44 shares of Interrent with a book value of $683 and a market value of $767. This gives me a gain of $84, which is 12.3%. Factor in my lifetime dividends of $2.79, and that's a total gain of $86.91, or a 12.71% return. This also makes up 2% of my overall portfolio, and I have a yield on cost at 2.11 percent. Interrent is a residential real estate fund. This is a perfect holding if you're looking for long-term growth potential. Not to mention if you've been following Canada's raging housing market, Canada's real estate market in general, you know exactly why this is a perfect holding for the long term. They have acquired an additional 1,200 rent paying suites, adding to that ever-growing portfolio of residential properties. They have increased their top line revenue and fund from operation by over 15 percent. This is a great stock and I'm going to keep adding to it in the second half of 2021. Next stock up, Metro, ticker symbol MRU. Metro is one of the largest grocery chains in the country. Sales were up during the pandemic as they are an essential service. I currently have 15 shares of Metro with a book value of $858 and a market value of $958. This gives you an open gain of just under $100 and an 11.59% return. Factor in my $3.50 of lifetime dividends and my gain is over $100, which is a perfect 12% return so far. And this makes up 2% of my overall portfolio. And for Metro, I have a yield on cost at 1.75%. Metro is a pillar of consistency. Nothing flashy, just consistent growth time and time again. The company's low yield may be a turnoff for some, 
but this is one of the best dividend growth stocks in the country. Not to mention, there is so much demand for online grocery shopping and e-commerce in general, and Metro is an icon in this industry. So you can see why I'll be picking up even more shares in the second half of 2021. Next stock up is Royal Bank of Canada, ticker symbol RY. Royal Bank is a Canadian name that needs no introduction. At the time of filming of this video, Royal Bank is the largest Canadian public company on the TSX. I currently have 17 shares of Royal Bank with a book value of over $2,000, and a market value of over $2,200. I currently have an open gain of $215, a 10.68% return, factor in my $6.48 of dividends, and my total gain is $221, or 11%, 0.01% return. Royal Bank currently makes up 6% of my overall portfolio, with a yield on cost at 3.66%. Now, if this 6% were to drop below 5%, as I mentioned about BMO, I'll be picking up more shares regardless of the market price. That's how much I believe in the long-term potential of both Royal Bank and BMO. And after reporting its Q2 2021 results, Royal Bank had more than $10 billion in excess capital, which will be used to increase their dividends in the very near future. And I'm definitely looking forward to that. Honestly, I'm expecting at least a 10% minimum increase in their dividend rate. Royal Bank is one of Canada's most valuable companies, and they are focused on delivering a premium return. Next stock up, Open Text Corporation, ticker symbol OTEX. Open Text is a growing Canadian tech company that specializes in developing and selling enterprise management software. I currently have 22 shares with a book value just under $1,300 and a market value just under $1,500. My open gain on this holding is close to $175 with a 13.45% return, factored in my $5 of dividends, and that's a total gain of $188 or a total return of 13.86%. This currently makes up 4% of my overall portfolio with a yield on cost at 1.64%. Open Text is best known for helping their clients and their customers accelerate the path to information modernization. For example, Open Text's partnership with Google allowed it to integrate Google Cloud into its platform for its enterprise customers. For me, this company has the right mix of fundamentals, positive cash flow, dividend growth, capital appreciation, and to top it all off, a fair valuation. Factor in that growing stream of dividends, and this is a core holding, which I'll be growing in the second half of 2021. Next stock up, Silages, ticker symbol SYZ. I personally like to call this company Big Red, and you'll see why in a second. Silages is a small company and it's a thinly traded stock that you might have missed. It has a market cap of around $250 million, and its average volume of trading is around $25 to $30,000. I currently have 31 shares with a book value of $468 and a market value of $334. So, why do I call this Big Red? Because I have a monster loss of close to 30% on this holding with an open loss of $133 dollars factor in my three dollars of dividends and my loss is still over 130 dollars and my total return is negative 27.92 percent this makes up one percent of my overall portfolio with the yield on cost at 3.17 percent this is a high risk small cap stock it has generated some incredible returns over the past 10 years not so much in 2021 They've also been paying a growing dividend for the last few years. And this is why I'm holding on to the stock because of its growth potential and a growing stream of dividends. It's a tech company. It has a solution. It has a platform solution, which its customers rely on. And it's going to grow that platform. All the stock is getting hammered in 2021 because of its revenues being impacted by a rise in the Canadian dollar and a drop in the US dollars. So it's seeing some negative impacts on its cash flow because of foreign currency. But for me, I still think there is some potential going into the second half of 2021 and going into 2022. So this for me is a wait and see approach. I'll actually hold on to the stock and just see where it goes in the next six months to the next one year. And because it's not a major holding, since it only makes up 1% of my overall portfolio, so I'm okay collecting those dividends and going for that ride. So these are my overall stocks where I'm seeing major gains or losses. Considering I started this portfolio in March of 2021, I am pleased with the results. There's not a single holding in my portfolio that I'm looking to get rid of right now. These are all long-term plays, even the ones where I'm seeing losses like Silagist. In fact, I'm going to continue and build on these existing positions. As soon as they fall below my target asset allocation, I will pick up more shares. So if I look at the portfolio on an overall basis, I have a cash balance of less than $30, a book value of $38,300 and a market value just under $40,500. I have an open overall gain of over $2,100, which is a 5.6% return, factored in my lifetime dividends of $220, and my total gain is $2,365, which is a total return of 6.17%. And again, 
it's August right now. And as I mentioned, I started this portfolio in March. So the last five, six months, I'm already up over 6%, including my dividends. And my overall portfolio yield is 2.84%. And to me, this is a perfect balance that it's not too high where I'm risking too many cuts. And it's not too low where I can't enjoy that dividend cash flow. It's in that right happy medium of just around 3%. Now I want to quickly show you guys my July 2021 trading summary. These are all the stock purchases I made in the month of July. I invested over $2,200. And the biggest purchases that I made in terms of my top five went to Magna, Telus, QSR, Restaurant Brands International, Waste Connections, and Adco. These top five holdings, I invested over $845 picking up these many shares. So in total, in July, I picked up 47 shares in 25 different holdings. Let's take a look at my dividend income for the month of July. I earned a grand total of $51.07. Now, July tends to be the lowest month in terms of dividend payouts, as you can see in terms of cycle. If I take a look at a full quarter, the first month is always the lowest. Second month is in the middle and the quarter end month. So May, June, September and December tends to be the highest in terms of dividend income. So for July, I have $51.07, which I earned from 11 different companies. And the biggest dividend was from TD at $18.96. And on this part of the spreadsheet, this is where I keep track of my cash flow. This shows me when I can expect payment, which companies are making a payment, what the yield on that payment is, and the amount of dividends. So for example, on July 16th, I'm expecting Allied, Granite, Interrent, and SRU a total dividend of $7.85. On August 24th, Royal Bank will kick in with a dividend of $18.36. That's a yield of 3.65%. And I can use this timeline to see when my other dividends are coming in. So here are all the payments I'm expecting in September. So as I mentioned in this video, if you guys are interested in using this spreadsheet, it's available for your download. Just make sure you check out the link in the description. The other thing I want to quickly show you guys is my hourly passive income. So if I take a look at my dividend income for the month of July, which is $51.07. The number of workdays in July are 21 workdays. So if I do the math, I end up with 30 cents per hour, assuming a nine to five job every workday. And if I were to take that concept and look at the last three months of the quarter, so trading three months, my hourly passive income based on 65 workdays is 45 cents per hour. And this concept, it's a powerful concept to me. This shows you that while I'm out doing whatever it is I do, this dividend portfolio is generating income on an hourly basis, which I can use to invest in more stocks, to buy something or do whatever I want because it's cold, hard cash that shows up in my account almost every other day when dividends get paid out. And if you are using this mindset of building a stream of passive income, this just shows you how close you are until you can completely live off your dividend portfolio based on your expected hourly dividend income. So that's your overall concept. You can have a target of let's say $25 per hour or $30 per hour. Once you hit those milestones, you can maybe take it easy from work, work part-time. The choice is yours. That's a concept. This gives you freedom. That's 30 cents per hour or 45 cents per hour of freedom. That's that one hour you don't have to work and you still get paid. So that's why I love dividend investing. It's a path to financial freedom. It's a path to financial independence. Thank you so much for watching. This channel would not exist without your love and your support. If you've enjoyed this video or any one of my other videos, consider hitting that super thanks button on the bottom of this video. It's a new way to directly support your favorite content creators on YouTube. Or if you'd like, you can buy me a virtual coffee as another way to support my content and the channel. All proceeds will be used to bring you even more value added content that I hope will leave a lasting impact on your investing journey. So if that sounds good to you, check out the link in the description of this video to buy me that virtual coffee. And on that very same page, you can download my custom built Excel based dividend portfolio tracking spreadsheet, which I use to track my own dividends, forecast my dividend income and track my gains. So you can keep track of your portfolio exactly the same way I do. If you have questions for me, feedback on this video, or maybe you have ideas on future content, let me know your thoughts in the comment section. And while you're at it, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button or that thanks button. That's it for now. I'll talk to you in the comments section.